Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the post fertilization events because now we understood that okay the fusion happened. So what is the result of fusion? Zygote is formed and primary endosperm cell that is PEC is formed. Now we want to understand what happens to the zygote and the PEC. So that is what we will discuss in post fertilization events. So what are post fertilization events as we know? These are the events which follow the double fertilization process. So here we will see how the endosperm is developed from the PEC. So PEC was the product of fertilization and we will see how PEC develops into endosperm after fertilization. We will also see how the zygote develops into embryo. We will also see how the ovule develops into a seed and how the ovary changes into a fruit. So that means after fertilization, instead of the female reproductive structure, especially the ovary ovule part, you will actually have a fruit instead. Instead of the flower, you will actually have a fruit and inside the fruit you will have a seed. Inside the seed you have an embryo and the endosperm. So you are getting my point? So now you understand why the why do you see in plants that you have flowers. Only after flowers are formed, you are able to find fruits in that plant. For example, if you plant any tree in your house which gives any fruit, say mango or guava or anything, you will see that first of all flowers come up on the tree because until and unless flowers develop, the tree is still in the juvenile phase, vegetative phase. That means it is not capable of sexual reproduction. So once flower starts appearing, that means the reproductive organs have started develop. Now once re once the process of fertilization also takes place, then what happens? The flowers go off and they are replaced by the fruit because fruit is nothing but the ovary of the flower. The ovary becomes, the ripened ovary is the fruit and inside the fruit you have the seeds and those seeds are capable of giving rise to a new plant because inside the seed you have the embryo and the endosperm. So embryo will get nourishment from the endosperm and this in turn can grow and give rise to a new plant altogether. So we will talk about each of these structures one by one, endosperm, embryo, seed and fruit. So here this is the flower. So inside the flower you have the ovary, ovule and everything. Gradually this over ovary will turn into the fruit. The ovary becomes the fruit. The ovule which you have inside that becomes the seed. Inside the ovule you have the embryo and the embryo becomes the, I mean the zygote becomes the embryo and then you have the endosperm to provide its nourishment. And then inside this, as I said, inside the, um, inside the fruit you have the seed. So if you exactly look at the structure of the seed, this is how it looks like. Now even inside the seed, you will be able to find the embryo, different parts of the embryo, how it gives rise to the new plant. So we will talk about all that now. So first let us talk about endosperm. So what is endosperm? So let us see what is endosperm, how it develops, when it develops and everything related to it. Now as I mentioned before, that as a result of uh, fertilization, Primary endosperm cell is formed. This primary endosperm cell is a triploid cell. And this triploid cell later forms, later undergoes repeated division and it forms the endosperm. So where is the primary endosperm cell? So this is the primary endosperm cell. What are these? These three cells are the antipodals. So now if you are getting confused then how come antipodals are at the downside. So I have just inverted the image. That is why it is this side. And what are these three? So this is the egg. So the egg gang, the, the male gamete fuse together to form the zygote. So now this primary endosperm cell will undergo many more uh, cell divisions and it will form triploid endosperm tissue. So this was also triploid, so this was also triploid because these repeated divisions they are not meiotic division, they are mitotic divisions. 
So there the ploidy will remain the same. Triploid will remain triploid. There will be no reduction in the number of chromosomes. So triploid endosperm tissue will be formed and the development of the endosperm always happens before the development of the embryo because I told you that zygote will also develop into embryo but the development of the PEC is occurs before the development of embryo. Why so? Because endosperm is the one which will provide nourishment to the embryo. So unless and until the nourishment is ready, there is no point in developing the embryo. Because the embryo needs nourishment in order to grow. So first of all, the endosperm has to be formed. So it provides nutrition to the developing embryo and that is the main purpose of the endosperm. I will give you some live examples of endosperm which will help you to relate this that okay where exactly uh, do you see an endosperm. Now cells inside this endosperm tissue they are all filled with food materials. Now any tissue is made up of cell right. So this endosperm tissue is also made up of multiple cells and each of those cells are full of food materials and those food materials they help to provide nutrition and the endosperm is highly nutritious. Now let us see how exactly the development of this endosperm take place. Most commonly the type of endosperm which is developed is known as the free nuclear endosperm. So we will understand that once we are able to understand this example. So I'll take the example of the coconut. I'm sure all of you are aware of coconut. All of you know how a coconut looks like and everything. Right? Now you would have seen that there are two forms of coconut. One is the tender coconut, which you often uh, you drink the water of the tender coconut during summer. Right? So that is one form of coconut. The other form is the mature coconut, which is which has got a hard brown shell and you often I mean inside you don't have much water, sometimes a little bit of coconut milk. Otherwise, you have a very thick uh, this layer, that white colored layer, which we consume either in sweets or in other dishes, right? So these are the two forms of coconut which we see. Now let us see where is the endosperm involved here in the story of coconut. Okay. Now when we talk about this tender coconut, right? The water which we drink in this tender coconut, do you know what is that water? That water inside the tender coconut is nothing but the endosperm. And the endosperm in a tender coconut is found in the form of a clear fluid. That is why you would have often heard people saying that the water of the tender coconut is extremely nutritious and it is very good for health. Why? Because it is the endosperm and endosperm is extremely nutritious as I told you. Because its job is to provide nutrition to the growing embryo. Right? Okay. So now... What is there in that fluid? Now that fluid has multiple nuclei which are floating in it. And as I said, it is extremely nutritious. Now as the coconut matures, now why is it called tender coconut? Because it is the early stage of formation of the coconut. This tender coconut over a period of time develops into a mature coconut like this, where you don't have much water inside. So how that trans what happens during this transformation? Why so much changes inside? Now, gradually there are now, in this phase, there is liquid endosperm in which multiple nuclei are floating. Later, cell walls start developing, developing, enclosing several nuclei. Now, let us suppose in the tender coconut water, lot of nuclei are floating. Now, what will happen? Cell walls will start developing, enclosing few nuclei. Now, how many nuclei will be enclosed? That is something which is variable. So, multiple nuclei will be enclosed by one cell wall and gradually, these cells will start to form. As I said, whenever cell wall formation takes place, that means there will be no further formation of nuclei. There will be no further division of nuclei and cells will start to form. So here also, first, a lot of free nuclei will be formed. First, and now, another important question. How these nuclei are formed? Just now I told that a lot of nuclei are floating in the fluid. So from where are those nuclei formed? Okay, so get back to the basics. You remember where was the embryo sac present? The embryo sac was present somewhere here, right? Inside which you had all the eight cells. Outside the embryo sac, you had the new cells, right? So the embryo sac was basically located in the new cells. 
Now, sometimes what happens is the cells of these new cells, they start dividing and they give rise to a lot of nuclei. So, that is the origin of the formation of so many free nuclei. So, these free nuclei, they start floating in the uh, endosperm, like how it does in case of the tender coconut. So, what happens as I was telling, these many nuclei, then cell walls start to develop. So, cells start forming. So, these cells and nuclei start settling at the periphery. So, the cells and the nuclei will start to settle down towards the periphery. And that is why the periphery tends to become thicker. If you see a tender coconut, which has got a lot of water and very less skin or very less, what you say, that white flesh, that is very less and there is more of water. Now, as the water con content keeps on decreasing, the thickness of that white flesh keeps on increasing. And that is why when it becomes completely matured, in a completely matured coconut, there is hardly any water. And sometimes the water, whichever is left, it turns milky and it is surrounded by the cellular part. So, this portion is the cellular part which is called kernel and it does not contain any more free nuclei. So, now you do not have any free nuclei. They have all got surrounded by cell walls and a cellular endosperm has formed. So, in a mature coconut, what you see here is the cellular endosperm. So that means the edible part of the coconut is the endosperm and here what you see is the liquid endosperm which is in the form of free nuclei that is free nuclear endosperm. So these are the various forms of endosperm. So now you understand how nutritious endosperm is that it is, it even, it is edible for us. So it is the most common type of endosperm development. So when you talk about endosperm development, it develops from the primary endosperm cells, that is PEC. So PEC undergo repeated divisions. So due to those repeated divisions, a lot of free nuclei are formed. So the primary endosperm nuclei undergo repeated division to form free nuclei and these free nuclei keeps floating initially. Gradually cell walls are formed and cell walls start to enclose these free nuclei. So what happens? The presence of the number of free nuclei tend to decrease and cellular endosperm start to form. So as a result, endosperm becomes cellular. So this is how endosperm is formed from primary endosperm nuclei. So I hope this concept is clear. Okay. Now let us look at the types of seeds based on the presence or absence of endosperm. Because uh, the endosperm is not always present in all the seeds. Now by now you understood where is the endosperm present. Endosperm is formed from the PEC. And PEC is present inside the ovule. Right? And the ovule later forms the seed. So basically it is present inside the seed. Now, one sort of seeds are called endospermic seeds and they are the ones which contain endosperm. Now, what do we mean by containing and not containing endosperm? Endosperm basically is used as uh, nutrition or nourishment by the embryo. Now, sometimes it happens that the embryo utilizes the complete endosperm and there is no endosperm left over. So, they are not endospermic seeds. Whereas, there are certain seeds where some of the endosperm is left to be used up later during the seed germination. For example, the same embryo will again grow to form a small seedling and which will later grow to form a plant. So that time also it will need some nutrition. So in order to provide nutrition during that time, some endosperm is left over. So these endospermic seeds are the ones which have endosperm. They are also called albuminous seeds. Examples of such seeds are wheat, rice, they are all are, they all still have the endosperm in them. So if you look at each seed of uh, the wheat or rice, you will actually see that inside the seed you have the endosperm. Non-endospermic seeds are those which do not have any endosperm left. So they lack endosperm at maturity and they are also called non-albuminous seeds. And examples are pea, bean, these are all examples of non-endospermic seeds. So here you just have the seed, there is no endosperm with it. Thank you.
please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.